I got a new CNC from Stepcraft that came in this big box that's made from quarter inch hardwood plywood. And in this video, I'll be making a table to put the CNC on, and I'll be using that quarter inch plywood from the crate to build it. The first step, of course, was to cut it apart. And for the top, I wanna to make what's known as a torsion box. And even though it's more complex to build, it has a couple of features that make it perfect for this application. And the first is that they stay really flat. And the second is that they're not very heavy. And even though I'm using this as a CNC table, those two qualities of a torsion box work really well for an assembly table too. With the top assembled, I can start cutting out the parts for the legs, and I'm gonna be using some recycled half-inch plywood, and I'm making these L-shaped, and they'll screw directly onto the edge of the torsion box, right at each corner. And while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on those and the top, I can get the drawers made. I'm gonna have two in here, and once again, I'll be using scrap plywood to make the bulk of it, including more of the quarter inch plywood for the crate for the bottoms of the drawers. These metal fasteners that hold the crate together have an incredible grip on the plywood. I tried taking one off and basically destroyed the plywood, so instead I'm just gonna cut off enough so that it's not in the way anymore. The quarter inch plywood bottoms will fit in slots that I'm going to cut in the side and to do that I'm going to change the blade of my saw to one that's a bit thicker and also has flat teeth. With all the parts cut out, then I can do a little bit of sanding, mainly to clean up the plywood, make it look a little bit more presentable, and then I can put them together, and that's simple enough. I'm using brads and regular woodworking glue, and it's important to check to make sure that they're actually square after you put them together before the glue dries. In the meantime, the glue dried enough on the top so I could trim the edge and also on the legs so I could get those fastened as well. I'm using full extension metal drawer slides for this and it's a good idea to get those installed on the panels before you put the panels in, if you can. It makes it a lot easier. I need to fasten this panel that goes between the two drawers to the underside of the top. And probably the easiest way to do that is with pocket screws. I don't use pocket screws very often, so therefore I don't have a jig, but it's easy enough to do it manually with a regular drill bit. And then I can get the other half of the drawer slides put on the drawer and then get those put in to make sure that they're working correctly. Next, I'm gonna add stretchers at the bottom of the legs to tie them all together. 
This adds a lot of strength. And I should mention that none of these leg parts are actually getting glued. Because this table is so big, it won't fit through a regular door, so I want to be able to take it apart if I need to in the future. Now for the drawers, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to be able to open the drawers and then use the top of the drawer as kind of a work surface. So I'm thinking that I would add a panel to the top of the drawer that would slide out with the drawer. And this doesn't have to be thick, it's sitting on top of the drawer after all. So once again, I'm going to be using more of the quarter inch plywood. This block that I'm adding to the front edge of the panel will catch on the back of the drawer as you're pulling it open. Now with all that done, I can move it down to the floor. And being a one-man operation, you have to figure out ways to do this without breaking your back. The problem with that torsion box wanting to stay really flat is that if the floor itself is not flat, there's a really good chance that only three of the wheels will be sitting on the floor at one time and the other one will be up off the floor, making the thing kind of tippy. To solve that, I'm gonna build a mechanism that lets those back wheels move independently of the frame, kind of like a seesaw. Now, I didn't film this because I was designing on the fly and I was on a roll and I didn't wanna be interrupted, but I did stop every once in a while and take pictures, and that's what you're looking at here. This first one is actually where the wheels mount and it's just a strip of three quarter inch plywood. And then for this to work, I had to add another stretcher on the inside and then I made two brackets with half inch plywood and I drilled two inch holes in those for the pivot point. And then I had to take my stretchers off again and drill the holes in there as well. The pivot pin is just a two inch dowel and then I could fasten those brackets to the wheels and that part is finished. These are wooden springs that I made to give a little bit of downforce over each wheel. I'm not sure if this is actually needed, but it certainly can't hurt. And with the holes lined up, I can drive in a pivot pin and here's how it works. And with that put on, I can flip the table over and then drive in a screw to lock that dowel in place. Then I can get the drawers put back in and here's how that sliding panel works. After that, I sanded the top to clean it up and gave it a coat of water-based polyurethane. I also did the legs, but I wasn't happy with how the grain looked in the legs, so I decided to paint those instead, and I did the same for the drawer fronts. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is for my new CNC, but it would also make a very good mobile assembly table, especially with the torsion box top to keep it nice and flat, and the independent rear suspension that keeps all four wheels on the floor.